We're just talking off air. First of all, Jalen, thank you for taking the time to, to join us. Yeah, thank you for having me. We were just talking off air. A uh, little, little fitness test as you, yeah. everybody's getting back in town today. How was that? Uh, I mean, like any other year, it's hard <laughs> and you want to get through it. But, uh, you know, you work all summer for it. And, you know, a lot of guys were prepared for it. And I'm pretty sure everybody did good today. Uh, are you are, – like are you mentally ready? The the off season's coming yeah. to a close. There's always kind of that kind of the 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 conditioning tests, or sometimes it's the first time everybody the whole team gets together. It's like the the mark of your off season's done and the season's here. Are you, you ready for that that yeah. vibe? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, I've been uh, here all summer, so the mm-hmm. gym was a little quiet, just me and a few other guys. But you know, as as more guys come in, you start feeling the vibe, and the boys are back in town, and you know we're ready to go. You know, we had a good year last year, and we want to keep that momentum and you know finish off strong. What goes into that decision to to stay here in the triangle and and, and hang out and you know so many, I, I mean international players and there's guys up in Canada. You're from yeah. Michigan, like like what's the 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 decision to hang around? Um, it's 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 two two things. Uh, one, I had a baby this summer, so we were going to the doctor here. Yeah, thank you. And uh, we had the crib set up in the room, and it, <laughs> it was just easier instead of transitioning and trying to make it back to Michigan. We don't have a place back there, and. Uh, Second, I'm good friends with Slavin, and uh, he's been here every summer mm-hmm. since I'm pretty sure since he turned pro. And uh, he told me how great the training is with Billy, our guy. And uh, you know, throughout the year, you know, I definitely seen that. So it, it wasn't a hard decision to uh, you know stay here. We're, we're talking with Jalen Chatfield joining us here in studio on uh, the drive on 99.9 The Fan. Uh, I, I saw the pictures on on Instagram. Becoming a dad over the off season, as I said, congratulations. Should we expect like a little bit of dad strength? Are you are you are you, bring, are you bringing more more of that, I, that? I will say today they were getting ready to cut the ice with the zamboni, and they had the two pegs in the net in the ice. I mean, yeah, that, that go on top of the net, and they couldn't get it out. So I came out there, no shirt, one skate on, <laughs> other skate not tied, and uh, I basically went out there and put my grip strength and twisted it and got it out. And then when I came back off, a lot of guys were laughing, saying, that's that dad strength you got in you now. So That's homegrown. There's, Maybe, I mean, yeah. that's, there's no weightlifting for no. the one one skate I'm on. There. That's like building a crib, right? right you're, like, yeah. you're like, I just want this done so I can get some sleep, uh, <laughs> which is which is uh, mm-hmm. kind of – actually, you know what? That's, that's a solid metaphor for – your career a little bit right a little unexpected one skate on it doesn't matter what it is you're gonna make it work uh i I, i'll just give the the breakdown here quickly uh undrafted Mm -hmm. took a few years to get to the nhl you had 18 games in 2020 2021 for vancouver 16 games in carolina the next year you're first with the canes then last year happens, and, and you play 78 games in the regular season, 15 playoff games, career highs in, in goals, points, just about just about everything. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel to finally kind of get your chance to prove yourself as, as a 26-year-old, which is a little bit later than you know a lot of guys that, that you're playing with? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a relief in a way, but you know the work doesn't stop, but I mean – it, it, it's been a grind, but you know over the years I've uh, I've learned to enjoy the process and just stick with it and you know just trust in myself and you know that the things were going to um, play out the way they're supposed to and you know getting the opportunity like you said two years ago to come to Carolina only played 16 games but you know I was fortunate enough to get an extension and you know get another opportunity with the team and you know I came into camp with that mindset that I want to make the team and I want to play and I want to help and uh, contribute and you know I did as best as I could and you know just even next year I want to keep getting better working every day on ice and you know just keep the momentum going. Your process doesn't change. I, I get that, but the situation has to change a little yeah. bit, right? Like this off season, you're in town. You're talking about how you know the the facilities, and you're using the facilities and the 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 staff and and all those sorts of things. When you walk in, they have to treat you differently. When you're coming back from playing 15 postseason games and contributing, and you heard the highlight when we came back from from the commercial, yeah. you're scoring you know high profile goals now. Uh, is is how has it been different this off season maybe than than off seasons in the past? I mean, you might be a little bit more comfortable. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you were with the team last year. You're not coming into camp like you know dropping off your gear, don't know where you're going to be getting dressed at that type of thing. But you know, as far as all that goes, I come with the same mindset. Every year I'm going to have the same mindset to retire. I'm going to come in like I'm trying to make a team because that's just how I work. And uh, every day I just want to be great. And, you know, that's uh, part of the process too. But definitely being here and staying all summer made it a lot easier transitioning into camp right now and, uh, you know, the testing because i just been here all summer. Guys are coming in. I never left. And, you know, it's been a great thing. Uh, going back maybe even further than that, uh, I found it interesting, right, You're you're from Michigan. Uh, yet you you go the juniors route rather than the the college hockey route. What went into to that decision? Because 
I mean, here in the Triangle, we're such a college sports market, right? Yeah. And, and, and there's so much focus on all these different colleges. You looked at the college system and said, I'm, I'm going this other way. What, what was that? It's kind of crazy. So uh, when I went to juniors, I went at 18 mm-hmm. and three years of eligibility before you could turn pro. And I could have went to the USHO for two or three years and played four years of college and had a long time to develop. But a big thing for me was it was the Windsor Spitfires. And I know it's just a great organization. They did so much for me when I was there. Three of the best years of my life. And uh, it was right over the border, easy for my parents to come to the game, to my family. And, uh, you know, at the time, I was thinking about the college route, but then I got that opportunity. And it was always a dream of mine to play in the OHL. Don't know why. Uh, <laughs> I can't think a little bit. Uh, I played at CompuWare Arena. It was the same arena that the Plymouth Whalers played at, and they were in the OHL. So okay. I I actually got to go and watch a lot of games after practices. So I think that inspired me at a young age to want to play in that league. So when I got that opportunity, you know, I smiled, I jumped on it, and, you know, I never looked back. And I, at the time, I wasn't looking at, you know, how long I had to turn pro. I was looking at the next step in front of me, and that was being able to play 68 games in the Ontario Hockey League. To me, great hockey, great players, and it was a great organization. So it was an easy pick for me. Were there, were there ever moments, and we're talking with Jalen Chatfield, defenseman, Carolina Hurricanes, catching up on, on some of his background in, in hockey and his dramatic rise to being a, a main contributor on, on last year and, and the future Canes. Um, was there a time when maybe you were looking around or uh, the years were dragging on a bit and you thought maybe, like, yeah, I wish I you know, I did go to uh, Minnesota or, or Boston College? <laughs> like, Was there ever a moment where you thought, I wish I did go another route? Not, I mean, no, I wouldn't say that. Did I, did I wish I could maybe experience one thing, you know, go to college and see how that was? Maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, in life you get a path and there's no getting that time back. So I made that decision at 18 and, you know, I'm happy with it. And, you know, college would have been cool to experience, but definitely if I had to do it again, I'd go OHL. Uh, do you have an idol? Did you, did, what, like a, growing up, you mentioned, you know, you know, the, 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 the older guys that are playing in your arena, did you have a, a pro that maybe you modeled your game after somebody whose poster was on the wall, a Jersey that you were, you were rocking with? I was a big wings fan growing up and they had some really good teams and right. probably Nick Lidstrom. Okay. He, he was, everybody knows the kind of player he was and he was fun to watch for, since I was a little kid, I watched him all the way up to he retired. And, uh, I actually got the chance to play with one of his sons, for I think one or two years with the team. So, I mean, he came around every now and then. But, you know, when you're younger and you see him come in, you're smiling because you see him on TV that the next night. So, uh, you know, just guys from the wings. I mean, they had Zinnerberg, Datsuk, and if you even go back to the earlier 2000s, you know, they had Iserman mm-hmm. and Brett Hall. They had so many good players that came through. And I was really fortunate to to have a team in my city, in my, my state, that was as good as them. And, you know, Hockey Town was great. The Most of those guys you just mentioned were – Long before your time, yeah. Uh, sometimes you you hear like a like a welcome to the NHL moment is when you faced off against someone you grew up cheering for or grew up watching and idolizing. With those guys, long before, did you have like a welcome to the NHL moment? Did you have something that you know kind of made your your eyes get wide and go, "Holy cow, I made it!" I mean, uh, I mean, my first year, I mean, I played. It was the COVID year, so there was no fans. But just getting that opportunity to put that sweater on and uh, play an NHL game, it was it was unbelievable. Every kid dreams of it, and uh, you know, this year was it was it was different. You know, it was it was a different schedule. It was a grind. It was uh, traveling, and I got to play against the best players in the world. Uh, you know, every night you compete, you're playing against somebody you watched growing up, pretty much. Uh, Crosby, Ovechkin, you know, all around the league. You know, getting to play those guys was fun. So, did did you have a, a welcome to the NHL hit? Uh, that I gave to somebody, or we'll, we'll go one of each, know. one one that, one that you gave or one that you received. I, not really. I, I mean, I, I give out a few hits and take a few, so it was nothing really too crazy for me. Is that you? Just you don't want to put that out there? Yeah, is that what's going on? I mean, right. It is really. I can't really think right now. I'm trying. I'm pretty. I, I move forward pretty quick. Right. Nothing stuns my mind so much. So I, I, I actually like that. What was it? Yeah. What was it like getting your first taste of the NHL in that COVID year? You mentioned no fans. That has to be a, like you. You know, you're grinding through juniors. You're even even younger in the, in the prep hockey world, and then you 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 achieve what I have yeah. to imagine is a pretty big goal, and you get there, and you know, right, the the roar of the crowd is like you know five teammates yeah. and and uh, yeah, the fake speakers. yeah exactly. I loved it though because you know for me. I knew it wasn't going to last like this with the mm-hmm. fans, and I was like, let's take advantage of it. We got nobody in here. Let's go out and grind. Guys probably aren't working as hard because – and they were, but, you know, you, you get the fans uh-huh. behind you. It's a different game out there, definitely with, like, the fans we have here. So, I mean, it was, it was just trying to embrace the moment. That's what I try to do every day is just stay present and stay positive. And I, I knew, you know, 
the fans are going to be there. If not, I was going to play the game of hockey that I loved. I grew up my whole life playing without fans, so it wasn't. It was cool to go <laughs> back to that, you know, like you know, back like when it's you were like, a little it's kid. Our little league, right? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was a little weird, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, then, then to kind of jump ahead to your your Canes time here, you show up. Uh, in Carolina, right, right in kind of the middle of you know, since since Rod showed up, it's been up, 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 up. What is special about what the Canes are building here in Carolina? I think the culture. I mean, from top to bottom, I think Roddy leads the way, and you know, we got great leadership on the team, and uh, you know, a lot of guys even on the back end that helped me out. I mean, every single one of them. You know, even my D partner Dehan, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I mean, he was a veteran too, and I got the opportunity to play with him and learn from him, and then the guys on the right side like Burns and Pesh. I mean, watching them, you know, they had really good careers. Burns, he's I think on his twentieth, twentieth year in the league. Which is super impressive, and <laughs> Two I mean, decade when you start count, counting multiple, unbelievable, decades, yeah. man, unbelievable. I give him so much respect for what he's done because I know the grind that it is during the season for him to play that many years and at that level he does. You know, you definitely got to take notice of that and watch what he does and try to learn from him because what he's doing is right. And and you bring up the culture, uh, Sebas Sebastian Ajo yeah. locked up this off season long term deal. Uh, what does that do for the culture, knowing that one of the leaders, one of the, the faces of the franchise, he's not going anywhere? Again, we can start talking in decades with him pretty soon. Yeah. He's, he's going to be around for a long time. No, he's a special player. You know, everybody wants him on their team. You know, I'm being able to play with him every night, the plays he makes, the, you know, he's just he's an unbelievable player. And even off the ice, he's a great guy. I remember uh, – just the first day I came here two years ago, didn't know anybody. And he might not even remember this, but we did the bike test on like a Saturday. And he invited me out to lunch with him. And I ended up not going because <laughs> I was dying from the bike. And I went home and took a nap. But, I mean, it just shows. You want to, like, walk in stiff? No, you didn't want him to see you? <laughs> no, but it, it just shows, you know, the character of guys that are around the room here. And it's unbelievable. Uh Along those lines, and we're here on the drive on 99.9 The Fan talking with Jalen Chatfield, defenseman for the Carolina Hurricanes just ahead of their season getting started. We're less than two weeks to the preseason, by the way. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's sneaking up on us. Um, you're returning as part of a defense, key part of a defense, that allowed the second fewest goals per game last season. And then you, you add Dmitry Orlov, you you bring back to, to Carolina Tony D'Angelo. Like, how much better can this defense really get when, you know, the last two years you've been top two in goals against? I mean, you can always get better, right? I mean, there's always <laughs> another step above the peak, right? That's what uh, we got a little saying back at home with me and the few guys that train. It's always taking that next step above everybody else. And I think, you know, why not continue to be number one? Why not separate yourself more? I mean, we have a great team, great decor. The forwards help out, and the goaltending is great. So I think that all it's a good combo. That right? all it all pays a, fa uh, a, a contribute to to how good we are defensively. I think. Well when you look at, and I know you're not looking at these specific numbers, but this is to encapsulate the the hype. Um, mm -hmm. Betting favorite to win the Stanley Cup. I don't, I don't know if you've you've heard it, but it's true. You guys are the betting favorite to win the Stanley Cup. How do you deal with you know being a, a team now that the expectations are you're one of the few teams with a legitimate shot to hoist to hoist the cup? That's where you want to be, right? Who wants to play on a team that's not going to win? Um, so last year, getting the taste. I two years ago won in Chicago. I won it in Windsor, a championship. So that was my first championship in Windsor that I ever won growing up as a kid, always on like last place team. So when you get that taste of winning, it's something different. So we all going to embrace it. We're going to take it one day at a time, be present in the moment and just be positive. It's a long season. And I think last year, Roddy broke it down into two seasons. You play the regular season. And then after that playoffs happen, it's another season. It's another grind. It's another level. And me personally, I got some experience last year. I know the guys here got a lot of experience. So, I mean, it's it's going to be good. And, and, you know, we want to be in the driver's seat. The, the kids listening, did you hear that? He was on mostly last place teams? Is yeah, that what you said growing yeah, up? Yeah. There's the – if just because you're losing now as, as a yeah. youngster, you can you can still end up on in the NHL making making big-time plays. It's, de it's definitely worth the wait, too, the win there. So <laughs> uh, You said the first one was in Windsor? Yep, from what, Windsor. What do you remember about that? Um – it was kind of a blackout moment because yeah. it, it happened so quick. We hosted the Memorial Cup, and uh, we had a great team. And, and, you know, just you go through that grind of all the guys, and when it finally pays off, only one team a year gets that mm -hmm. gets that championship. It's 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 crazy, and it's something you want to relive, and you want to keep working for it. It's always a goal for me every year. Jalen Chatfield joining us in studio here on The Drive with Tim Donnelly on 99.9 The Fan, ahead of their season getting started with the Canes in just a couple of days. Um there's also kind of the the cutthroat nature of, mm -hmm. of pro sports, and it's less fun to talk about, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, 
how closely do you monitor kind of the the math, the numbers game of we've got a lot of really good defensemen and and mm. we're adding to it and there's only so much ice time, so you know, so many shifts to go around and and there might be some competition for who gets the opportunities to get out there on the ice. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that I mean that's just a, it's it's a business, right? Mm. It's nothing personal and you want to have guys. You never know what's going to happen throughout the year. You don't know if guys are going to get hurt and uh you know, it's all part of the job, and you know, me personally, you got to go out and just do the best you can do. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't worry about other guys or your 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 competition. You get the role, you stick with it, you play hard for the team, and you compete. And every day you're in practice, you're trying to get better. So if you do that, I don't see things going downhill. I just think positive, and you know, that's that's just where I'm at right now with all that. Just staying positive. We got a good group of guys back there, great numbers, and we got a lot of key players that can help us win. And and. How does the, the, the coaching staff, and they maybe haven't started this communication, maybe they're waiting for, for camp to get started, whatever it is, uh, but but how do they communicate, right, like potential line mates or, or uh, you know, where the competition stands? Do, do, do they keep you guys in the loop on that, or is it just, you know, we'll let you know when you need to know? I probably – I more let you know when you need to know. I mean, okay. the competition's going to be there. It's just, this is the NHL, right? Mm -hmm. It's Nothing's given to you, even – probably teams who are expected not to do uh, good there's competition going on so i mean it's pro sports this is what we play for if you want to play at the top level you're going to have competition you're going to have great competition you're going to have players that can play in the league and players that can dominate in the league and players that are played in the league so it's all about going out there like i said and just doing what you can do how hard is it and and you know, I think you just gave the right answer right not yeah. letting it affect anything but how hard is it not to get bogged down or or you know, not to dive too deep, and there's a lot of trade chatter around the team, and and Pesci's name's brought up, or or Shea's name's brought up, and uh, you know, obviously how those situations play out affect you. How, how difficult is it, or what's your reaction to it when those things happen? I'm not too involved with any of the rumors, to be honest. Um, these guys are here right now, so whatever's being said about them is kind of something you're looking in the future that doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. I'm staying present. They're here right now, and they're my teammates, and, you know, I'm going to go work with them, and, you know, we're all going to go out and play together. What's the uh, what's the, the, the one thing, if you had to name one, that you've added this offseason? What are, what are we going to watch this year and go like, oh, I didn't know Chatfield had that in, the, in, in his bag of tricks? I think I'm just going to be a little bit more confident with the puck, you know, uh, you know, getting the games in and, and just knowing the league a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough league to adjust to, to be honest. And, you know, fortunate enough to play for a great team and have a great coaching staff help me out. And I think you can't give somebody 10 years of experience without playing 10 years, you know? Well, that's like the, the, I, the problem with getting a job yeah, out of college, right? Exactly. They say it's an entry-level job, you yeah. need five years so, of experience. So every year <laughs> I just plan on uh, just getting better. I, okay. I'm working on my skills. I'm doing all that. I don't want to change the player I am. But just that confidence and having that experience of being a veteran in the league is something you can't teach. It's something you have to just go along and, and get. And, you know, I think that's going to be a key part for me. What you just said was was interesting. It's it's a tough league to adjust to. Yeah. What were what are or were uh, right? You're you're still so early in your career. What what are the hardest things to adjust to? Maybe jumping from uh, right the level right below, which is still really good hockey, yeah. but but then up to the NHL. I think. Uh, I mean, it, it's not going to be anything that's going to wow you, but it, it's the details every day. It's it's a consistent schedule of playing hockey games. A lot in the AHL, it's pretty much weekend loaded, so you practice for a little bit and then play. Here, it's two games back to back. Fly somewhere, you might have another game. Fly home, two days off. Game, game. You know, you're consistently playing, and I think a big thing is staying positive and focused because if you let one game affect you it could put you in a slump very quick in this league because you're consistently playing. And that can go from one game to five games to ten games. And I didn't really get caught in that because last year I would dial it in after each game. I would watch the video and then kind of wash it. We're going in the morning and watch it, and the next game you got to focus on your next opponent and uh, you know be ready to go out there. What's it like playing with some of the some of the old heads, right? You look at uh, you brought up guys that are playing two decades, right? Stahl is back for another, another four years. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, you know, last season you're 26 years old, trying trying to cut your teeth. What's it like playing with the guys mid 30s and higher? Unbelievable. They're all great athletes. They're about, they're in great shape. It's it's crazy to see. So it motivates me to know <laughs> that if I make to that age, I'm gonna be. Are you like looking at what like they're that. eating? Going like, all right, I need more greens. Like, uh, are, are you trying? What Burns are you trying? Is a, Burns is a big meat guy. I mean, right. we all take care of our Carnivore, bodies. Caveman? Yeah, yeah. We all we all take care of our bodies. I I try to eat pretty healthy. Uh, I think I think the biggest thing is just the rest too mm -hmm. is a big thing in in the season and in the off season you don't want to do too much especially when you get a little bit older you get a little bit more miles under your belt so 
It's about being a professional, resting, recovering, getting worked on, eating healthy, getting your sleep, you know, staying positive and focused. And, you know, like I said, just uh, I think those things are the key factors. And if you watch a lot of the older guys, they're pretty dialed in with their routine. And, and that's something that, you know, I continue to work on. That voice you hear is Jalen Chatfield, defenseman for the Carolina Hurricanes. He's with us in studio here on 99.9 The Fan. All right, so let me let me combine two of the things we've talked about. Uh, you stuck around here in in, in Raleigh for mm-hmm. the the off season, and you just said it's important to get your rest. So we know you were here. We know you were working out. You had the the program. You're working with the staff. When when you're in the off season, you have some free time. And I know you you had a a child over the so the free time might be a little little less than than you're used to. But what are you doing to unwind here in the triangle? Um, naps. <laughs> but to be honest, I spent a lot of time at Slavin. So okay. He has a nice pool back there. We'd go back there, cook a steaks, um, just have a good family time, maybe get a Bible study in, and mm-hmm. and you know just enjoy the water, enjoy the weather. Because when it's just hot outside, we the live in a town. We lovely. live in a townhouse, <laughs> and you know we got two dogs, and even trying to take the dogs outside, they're like, no, we don't want any of this. And I go out for five minutes, and I'm sweating. So, spending a lot of time with him has been awesome. Uh, he's he's mentored me last season. He's unbelievable player and even unbelievable guy, and he's a great friend and. You know, just being able to have him around this summer, he made my summer a lot better. I got to meet people outside the rink, and, uh, you know, it's just a great community. We're, we're nearing the end of our time here, so I want to get one more in. And, and uh, I, I'm just going to say this. This is with the, the hope that you're able to be here for, for a very long time. But uh, unrestricted free agent after this season, have, have you thought about what a big season – uh, you know, contract year is a thing in sports, not just hockey and in all professional sports. Have you thought about what a big season might do for your bank account? Uh, you know, you can't. I mean, I don't. I don't really want to think like that. You know, because you start thinking about, oh, I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to get paid, and next thing you know, you're not doing this and that. I just, like I said, I'm so focused on right now in the moment. If I start looking too far ahead, it distracts me. And okay, that's just me personally. So I right right now, I'm locked up this year and. We got practice tomorrow. <laughs> I got to go home, see the baby. I'm going to try to get through that. I let the agent take care of the rest of the stuff throughout the year. But, you know, my goal is helping the team win and, uh, you know, playing the best hockey I can. Uh, I, I and Part of the reason I ask that is because I'm, I'm looking up your stats, right, because, uh, you know, we're all very excited about this this – player that kind of came out of nowhere and was a major contributor and we're really excited about it. And to me, like the the – I'm not sure you would have been appreciated, you know, back pre advanced analytics, right? Cuz you the the goals, the 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 points are there, but then you look at like plus minus or some of these other things that you're able to measure and your numbers are much more impressive. So just make sure your agent knows when he's when he's yeah. arguing for, <laughs> when he's arguing for you, don't just come with, you know, uh, yeah. uh, RBIs and home runs, for come sure. with the war and, yeah. and the wins above replacement all getting, that that other in stuff. The grind, getting in the battle, yeah. Uh but but as a as a player like to be appreciated, you you or I will say that, like from the fan base and and, and from the team, do you feel appreciated? Oh, be, for sure. Because man. of you know, it might not be as obvious until you you take a deeper dive. The effect you're having on the game. I think so. I think uh, I've been respected around the room and and from the fan base. I think mm. and you know even people that have watched me growing up. You know, I've all been Jack so Mandu. proud of me. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> uh, it's it's you know I'm not out there. I don't score fifty points, seventy points, whatever. But you know I'm out there to help the team win. I'll block a shot that might go unnoticed. That helps us. You know those little things are what win championships, mm-hmm. and and that's what I want to bring this year: the consistency, the details, going to war every single night, putting on the vest and just battling. And that's what I want to do this year. And it's a grind. You do that eighty-two games, your body first feels terrible, and then you go into playoffs. <laughs> but then you get that new fresh fresh motivation and you're ready to go again and and this is what I love doing I've been doing this since I was like five and you know you can look I got the no teeth right now <laughs> I mean and I love it you know lose yeah. some more this year it's all right it's all part of the grind and uh you know like I said this is this is the best thing in the world to do is to play hockey Jalen with with answers like that I guarantee you the fan base will, will appreciate I, hope, I don't you. know yeah, maybe with, with, with <laughs> maybe. Answers, answers like that uh we appreciate you for stopping by good luck and uh yeah. get, get some rest and and tell that baby hello I will thank you